Uh, what they stood out is a strength in AI. We had previewed uh, uh, the quarter and expecting the AI will be a main growth driver. Their performance actually exceeded our, ex uh, our expectation. And they're executing in, uh, also on the cost front. Now, the F, uh, FX and the Taiwan appreciation is having some adverse impact on the gross margin, but the company is executing on a strategy of diversifying uh, the application for the leading edge. And there is no competition. They're becoming primarily the only leading edge foundry uh, that will be needed for uh, new AI products as well as the two nanometer that will be adopted by the smartphone market. So they're executing flawlessly. Now, the market was benefited from uh, Jensen Huang being in Beijing. We had a flurry of headlines coming through. Uh, he was over in uh, Beijing to attend a big expo there. We also got this week the announcement of the H20 chips to be exported into the Chinese market. Uh, so this is reinforcing that demand for AI is going to be persisting. What did you get from all of the headlines coming through from Jensen Huang? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if the H20 headline is, is going to be a meaningful near-term impact. I remind you that H20 was the growth driver late 2024 and early 2025 in anticipation of a ban coming. So I think the Chinese customers have accumulated plenty of H20. Now, if they come back and buy more later this year, that that's that's a, a, a gravy. Uh, but I think uh, what I see now is the black whale ramp. Uh, then there are different types of black whale. And as we look into 2026, what's going to be the key catalyst is two nanometer. And I actually would go uh, out of limb and argue that the TSMC's two nanometer could help uh, a smartphone uh, uh, OEM like Apple to actually differentiate. This would be a major, uh, a major uh, change in the process technology as we go from uh, FinFET to gate all around, and it could be a significant boost to performance of a smartphone and therefore help Apple with a stronger sell through. Are you able to quantify here for us the impact on TSMC when the export restrictions were put on NVIDIA's chips and AMD? Uh, they had each highlighted a $5.5 billion and $800 million revenue hit respectively. Now that this gate has been reopened, what boost do you expect for TSMC in their top line? Sure. If I were to look at the revenue mix by geography, China was better than... Uh, average second half of 24 and that um, sustained into Q1 um, and there is a sharp drop off in the China revenue contribution in Q2 and that includes the H20 uh, that uh, would be shippable to or that was shipped to the NVIDIA's customers uh, in, in that region. So I think uh, China could provide a couple of percentage of upside to the revenue mix as we look into the second half and if there is, uh, if there is additional demand for uh, H20. But I would go back to what I said earlier, Blackwell and the shipment to the U.S. customer is what's driving the significant growth and, that what, and what could sustain the growth into next year is the introduction of a two nanometer and that could actually help diversify. Then we will see the two main growth drivers. One will be the AI that is strong today and a smartphone that could strengthen into next year due to the performance advantage that TSMC's two nanometer could provide.